I really want to wrap up waves more properly than uh, how we ended last Tuesday. Um, I especially want to talk about something called the beat, um, which is a very interesting uh, wave um, interference. So maybe I should start out with a discussion of wave interference as a sort of reminder of what we have been talking about. So uh, when I say wave interference, do you feel like it's something that you know something about, like it doesn't sound new? What's going on when we are saying, that, uh, like, what does it mean for waves to interfere? Like, what does this mean? Does that mean, like, oh, wait. Does that mean, you know, I have some wave somewhere, and, and like, does it mean some kind of an interaction between the waves? As in, you know, if I set up a wave, and I get wave interference, um, when there's like two different waves on the same medium. So I could uh, like set, send out one and then send out another. As they come together, they interfere. Yeah, it's a, I mean, the way it's stated right now, it's a little bit vague. It could mean that. But when, so this is, I guess, maybe more important question. When two waves interfere, do they interact? Does one wave affect the other wave? I want you to come back to this simulation, especially for those of you who are nodding. Because if you're nodding, you probably weren't paying attention last week and the week before. Um, uh, so this is what you saw last time with the simulation. It's a lot easier to demonstrate with the simulation, which is why I do this. Um, when you see two waves, uh, let me do it with a loose end. Uh, slow motion, no damping, um, uh, fairly small pulse width. When you have two waves here, one, it's going to go, bounce, and come back. As they interfere, as they overlap, as they, as they, as they interfere, they do not affect each other. So I guess here it's hard to see. Watch these two waves um, interfering. Well, no quote. Watch these two waves interacting. As they come together, so the upright pulse, was that affected by this other pulse that it met on the way? No, right? So let me just go back to the beginning and do the fixed end so that I can um, do this without having gone through this twice. So when the pulse one and pulse two meet each other, do they affect each other? They don't. The pulse two continues on as though pulse one was never there. Pulse one continues on as though it never met pulse two. Now, we do have to handle at the moment they are meeting. At the moment they are meeting. This is the moment where we have to handle it somehow. And when we, call, when, we, um, when we talk about wave interference, we are really talking about moments like this. This is what we are calling wave interference. So what, when two waves are interfering, um, in what sense are they interfering? Because uh, we just went over. Um, I re-emphasized that one wave does not actually affect the other wave. They pass through each other. Uh, two waves interacting with each other is very different from other kinds of interaction you have seen. Like if you have two balls interacting, then as they overlap with each other, they don't really overlap. They bounce, they affect each other. But waves don't do that. Waves can actually overlap. And that's one of the conditions you need for interference. For two waves in, to interfere, they have to occupy the same time and space. They have to overlap. So as they're overlapping, what do they do? Like, is there any principle that you learned that gives you a rule on how to handle two waves overlapping? Stephen? Superposition. Yeah, superposition principle. So when we talk about wave interference, 
you can replace this with the idea of superposition principle. And I just want you to remember that we give it a fancy name because the thing that you do for superposition principle is such a simple thing. So what you have with the wave interference is that you have two waves. Let me call one uh, wave F1. That's a function of position and time. So it's a function of position and time. And you have another wave, uh, like those two pulses there, F2. That's also a function of position and time. And some of these positions and some of these times will overlap. So that there will be time where um, you know, two waves are overlapping on top of each other. And with the superposition principle, what we are saying is that as these two waves overlap, as they overlap, this is the combined um, the net result of these two waves. The re net result is simply a sum of these two. They add. They don't do anything else. They just add, and that's it. And um, I guess this class is a little bit too early to spend a lot of time on this. But for those of you who will take, be taking math three in the distant, well, not distant, in the near future, and you will be doing upper division level work in engineering and science, this is related to a property called linearity. It, this idea comes up a lot in both uh, physics and mathematics. Um, this is the linear property that you will see in linear algebra in math 3E. <laughs> um, and uh, linearity does mean something physically. Physically, when, um, when two uh, physical quantities exhibit linearity, physically what that, mean, what that means is that these two physical things don't interact with each other. So for example, these two, the interaction between these two, they are not linear. It's highly nonlinear. Like, so as they go, as they start to overlap, they do affect each other. They bounce and affect each other's path. So with the waves, because they don't interact with each other, you can simply add them. You don't have to have any other interaction terms that describes how one affects the other thing. So anyways, I'll just leave it there because to get it, yeah, we don't have the language to describe it better than that. Um, so, so when we talk about wave interference, really this is all that we are applying. And um, because of this uh, you know, sounds simple, once you understand it, it should sound simple. This is not some complicated principle. Um, I want you to point out some interesting examples that's a result of wave interference. And in fact, you have seen one of them already. Do you remember one of the examples of wave interference that you have already seen? That we worked out on Tuesday, actually. We did it before the end of the lecture. And you had a whole lab on in Asia. Yeah, standing waves. So standing waves was a a result of an interference between two waves. Let me just, uh, I won't write down the whole thing. Um, you can look in your notes and I'll eventually post the last Tuesday's video. But as an example, with the standing waves, um, so the total wave was a sum of two waves propagating in opposite directions. So one wave might be going, moving to the right. I could describe that as some amplitude times cosine of kx minus omega t. And um, when this overlaps or interferes with a wave that's traveling to the left, that would be a times cosine of kx plus omega t. It's this sign here, minus or plus, that tells you that this wave is moving to the right, this wave is moving to the left. That as they overlap, they create a pattern that results in nodes and antinodes. And you have seen them in the demonstration. 
and the lab you did on Tuesday was based on this. Yeah. But um, do you know any applications of standing waves? Like, uh, I mean, you know, I did tell you like two weeks ago that waves are the most important thing we do in this class, but I don't think I ever really demonstrated it. It's for waves are so important. Where do you see waves that are, I don't know, relevant, practical? Okay, what if we find never become a spy and I don't want to jam anyone else's <laughs> communication? <laughs> so um, that could be an example of interference, uh, but it's more of a just overwhelming someone else's signal. I want examples of standing waves, actually. Standing waves are actually, um, there are a lot of examples. In fact, there are examples of standing waves in quantum mechanics that you might eventually see. But you know, I want you to think of more mundane example if you have seen standing waves anywhere. There are many examples. Anybody here do music? Guitar, piano, wind instrument. Nobody here does music? Okay, some of you. Uh, music is impossible without standing waves. So I keep bringing this out. This is the first time I'm actually having time to bring this out. So this is a guitar. The principle on which guitar works is a standing wave. As in, you know, I have this string, and when I pluck it, uh, well, maybe. When I pluck this string, it emits a particular pitch, particular tone. And you know, why that's associated with this vibrating at a particular frequency. And so, you know, why does it vibrate at that particular frequency and not some other frequency? It's because when I pluck this string, the, right, they are out of tune. The most natural way it would vibrate is a frequency that forms a standing wave on this wave. And um, si similar principle works for almost any other musical instrument. Uh, even, well, yeah, except for your maybe vocal cord. But even then, uh, the kind of uh, sound that you can more easily produce is affected by the shape of your whatever. Um, so I, I will actually use this example a little bit more later. But so music is one of the biggest application of standing waves and waves at this stage. That's why there's a whole chapter on it in your textbook, um, you know, uh, sound waves. And, um, and you know, it's a good, uh, um, good sort of um, topical area to develop your intuition for waves. But I just want to tell you right from the beginning that the application for waves is much uh, greater than just this narrow area of music that apparently very few of you have interest in anyway. 